Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering EMC World 2015. Brought to you by EMC, Brocade, and VCE. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here, you're watching theCUBE. We're at EMC World 2015 in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's our sixth year coming to EMC World. It's actually where we started theCUBE many moons ago. And uh, we're really excited for this next segment to have our very special guest host, David Floyer, CTO and co-founder of Wikibon. Welcome, David. Hi, Jeff. Well, it's great to be back here again. And we've got a, a special guest today. His name is Tamir Segal. Uh, and he is a senior manager, a product uh, marketing manager for Extreme IO. And we're going to discuss business continuity. Yep. And uh, so, introduce yourself and how long have you been with Extreme IO? So my name is Tamil Segal, I'm Senior Manager of uh, Product Marketing in Extreme IO and actually I joined Extreme IO about two years ago, actually more than two years ago. Um, initially I was based in Israel as part, I was uh, involved in the product management of the Extreme IO, responsible for all of the Extreme IO uh, data services and I just recently moved to the Bay Area. Ah, welcome. welcome. Sticker shock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so this uh, whole area of uh, Flash, it's been an exciting journey, hasn't it? What, what, from a fundamental point of view, what have you observed about Extreme IO going in and the impact it's had on the data center and on, the, on all the processes within the data center? So, so we all know that uh, Flash is disruptive. We know that uh, it impacts the entire ecosystem. So it's not only about spin, it's about the entire ecosystem, whether, whether, whether it is the, um, uh, the way that people uh, work with snapshots, the way that uh, they design their workflow, and how actually it impacts the application learning, as well as the, you know, the daily work of, of the people. So it's really disruptive, and people need to adapt and change for that. Right. So, I mean, the traditional way of doing business conti continuity has always been pretty well replication, hasn't it? Synchronous or asynchronous replication of one sort or another. So, what's different about uh, the Flash? I mean, it's, it's obviously the architecture of the Flash is different. Everything's different about the Flash. Before we dive into the architecture, the first thing that we need to understand about Flash is that Flash is fast, right? Yeah. So, think about how many IOPS a Flash array can support million, million point two with Extreme IO, eight bricks. So think about the amount of changes that we now need to replicate for one minute in all flash array versus a one minute in a legacy array. Now think about the one, one usage that it now requires in order to replicate those one minute of changes. Um, another thing that you need to take into uh, account is uh, the fact that now you have the ability to consolidate many, many, many different mixed workloads into a single uh, platform, and you have many angry IOPS applications running concurrently, generating a lot of IOPS, and you need to be able to replicate them all together. Now, another aspect of it is that now, if you base your RPO, let's say, based on time, you've probably done that because you calculated, okay, what is the cost to my business if I'm losing one minute of, uh, of, uh, of data? Hmm. But now in one minute, you can get much more transactions than ah. Right. So your value per minute just goes through the roof, right? Right. right. So it, again, it impacts everything. It impacts right, the right. one, it impacts the, the infrastructure. Yeah, yeah. And also you need to take into consideration um, that once you turn on the application, and again, we're dealing with Flash, you don't want that to impact your predicted consistent performance of the old Flash array. You bought a you know, fast yeah. array in order to get you know, um, really good SLAs, uh, sub uh, millisecond uh, latency. You don't want to see spikes once you turn on and, and that's obviously one of the issues about traditional replication, even on uh, much lower I.O. rates, uh, exactly. traditional I.O. rates. So, um, uh, one, of the, one of the things that I, I think would be, uh, is completely different in the way that you approach things on Extreme I.O. and all flash arrays is the use of the, uh, the uh, snapshots, the space efficient snapshots, which are both read and write. So, can you talk a little bit more about the fundamentals of how you would go about replication, or how, how you would go about uh, business continuity with, a, with an all flash array? Sure, so what we've done is, uh, again, the Xtreme snapshots are very unique. We have um, in-memory metadata snapshot architectures that enables us to create 
really fast, uh, really rapid uh, creation of snapshots, and we can delete so what, them. What do you mean by fast? Um, again, if I create a snapshot, it is immediately available. There is no metadata, metadata block involved. There is no copy of metadata involved so in that is it process. A second, a five seconds, or a no? In terms of, of the second? creation, it's it's immediate. It's like a fraction of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of a so, second, so actually milliseconds, or even less than that. Yeah. Okay. So it's really yeah. fast. And again, the extremely in-memory metadata enables a lot of flexibility, so I can create uh, very complex topology snaps and snaps without any uh, impacts uh, on performance. Again, we will get the exact same performance on, uh, on snapshots, the same as you will get in, on production volume. Now, think about how I can leverage the extremely in-memory metadata, the ability that we have a way to rapidly create and delete snapshots without impacting the system. Think about how can I leverage that in order to perform replication. So this is exactly what we've done. Basically what we've done is we're leveraging the extremely in-memory metadata together with our in-memory metadata processing capabilities and API that we developed. And we are leveraging, basically we merged it with the recover point technology. And now what we are doing is we are offloading the heavier tasks of replication to the recover point appliances. So actually what we are getting is that once we are uh, adding more and more workloads into the XML array, we now can scale adding more X bricks, but can, we can also scale with the replication, adding more LPAs, again, getting the same predicted consistent performance um, as you would like to, to get them. Right. So, uh, so you're able to take all of that. Now, what does that mean in terms of RPO and RTO? So, it's always been a trade-off between the two, hasn't it? You can take, uh, uh, you, you can replicate uh, synchronously, but as soon as you replicate asynchronously, you really got a very thin pipe, which you're putting a lot of stuff down, and you've always had to trade off RPO and RTO. So. How does this work with an all flash array? So again, the trade-offs are specifically around the RPO. As fine as you want your RPO to be, the co more costly it will be uh, for you in terms of the WAN that you need to, uh, to allocate. Right. So for example, in synchronous application, you need to design your WAN for the maximum peaks that you will have in the system because again, you will get delayed because it is, you are waiting for acknowledgement from the other side. Right. Um, if you are willing to live with a longer RPO, then you can drive the cost down. So RPO basically is related more to trade-offs on, on costs. Um, RTO, I don't think you need to compromise on RTO. There's no trade-off between them, the trade-off is within each one of them. So the RTO that we are able to provide um, are uh, basically immediate. Any snapshot can be accessed immediately, immediately. And again, back to the replication that we developed using the recover point technology and the native integration with the uh, Extreme IO, what we are capable of doing with we are able to provide an RPO of 60 seconds or less at scale. Again, we can support the full potential performance of the extreme IO array, and we can replicate it entirely uh, using the, a single uh, recover point cluster. So you, you RPO 60 seconds, and then you do another snap, and then you, do, you go through that process yeah. So again, the fundamentals of how it works, basically, we create uh, a snapshot, um, mm -hmm. and then the first time, for the first time, obviously, we need to transfer every, everything sure. to the remote, yeah. remote side. There's no magic here. It's yeah. not like this, <laughs> and you <laughs> can get the data to appear at the, the right. other side. So you really need to sync everything to the other side. And then following that, depending on the uh, RPO settings that you have in the consistency group, uh, we have the flexibility to have different uh, protection policies per consistency group. Um, you, rep you can replicate the data, we'll create another snapshots. Using the extreme in-memory uh, API, basically we will query for differences between the snapshots and we only see those changes between the two sides. It's, it's gonna be really efficient. Back to the RPO questions. Again, one important aspect of it is the cost of one. Again, by the fact that we're leveraging the, uh, the heavier tasks of applications to the RPAs, we can actually allocate more resources to reduce the bandwidth that we consume. So that's another important aspect right. of that. So you can get down to now a true RPO of, of one minute, and, uh, and, and that, that's amazing, isn't it? I mean, that that's, that's completely changes the whole the whole landscape for RPO and RTO. Yeah. And again, yeah. you should not think about the legacy array approach. You should think about the whole flash. Again, they are disruptive. They generate a lot of IOs. Mm -hmm. You want the sub millisecond. You don't want it to be interrupted. 
Um, and again, getting a 60 seconds or even less, actually we are, we are able to support in some cases actually less than 30 seconds. Um, LPO, um, it is really important for your business. Again, it minimizes your business risks. In case so, of disaster. so how has that been for your customers? I mean, t tell me some examples of whether you're using this, uh, any specific areas where they, they are specifically using Extreme IO rather than any other approach. So actually, I, I'll tell you a very interesting story. So part of the unique capability of the Extreme IO array is again is the in-memory metadata and the snapshot creation, the efficient, special efficient snapshots that we have in Extreme IO. So one of the more interesting use cases is basically leveraging the DR capabilities or the DR site, the copy of the DR, uh, in order to create um, multiple copies for test and depth. So combining DR with test and depth provides you with a lot of cost savings. Uh, provide you with the confidence that you have your production pod uh, intact and your, you have your DR and test and dev consolidated. Um, and it provides a lot of efficiencies because now we have the space efficient snapshots, you can create them whenever you want, uh, you can create as many as you want, and they provide you the same performance as production uh, volume. So, I said a pretty impressive story. So the speed just opens up all types of new opportunities yeah. of the way that you approach the problems. Right. It's, it's, but again, it's not only speed, it's also about the data services, the efficiencies that you get, right, the inline right. deduplication, right. the compression, the specific snapshots, and now that really powerful application capabilities, if you combine them all, it's, I think it's very attractive and unique uh, uh, value proposition for our customers. Right, right, and like you said, and just because of the density of, of, the, of the application throughput and, and the capacity, you know, your, value of, your value of time goes up significantly. Yeah. So, and this uh, this announcement of the recover point, that's part of uh, 4.0, is it? Uh, it's, is that it's part of the 4.0 release. Uh, yeah. It will be available at the end of the quarter. Uh, available this quarter. Wow. At the end of this quarter, right. yes. At this quarter. And so, talk, talk a little bit more about where you put these. Uh, with the recover point, uh, my understanding is you can actually, you don't have to put it on extreme I.O., you can put it actually anywhere you want it to, is that right? Yeah, so actually we allow our, server, uh, our uh, customers to leverage existing assets, so it, not, it is not mandatory to use extreme I.O. at the DR side. So basically what you could do is you can replicate from extreme I.O. at the production side to let's say a VMAX, VNX, or actually third, uh, third party arrays using VPLEX freedom. So it really allows you a lot of flexibility in terms of using your existing assets. Yeah, Tamir, this is, uh, fa the, the flash story just continues to get better and better. We're getting the hook here, so I want to give you the last word. Don't give away any trade secrets, that's going to get you in trouble, but what, do you, what are some of the next kind of hills you guys are looking to climb? What are some of the challenges that you're excited about over the course of the next six months before we see you again at, uh, in 2016? So I don't want to get into too much details, but Think about how powerful the Extreme IO in memory metadata architecture is, what it is enabling, what an API for that can enable us in the future. Um, I think this is uh, where we'll head. We'll continue in investing in more and more data, uh, uh, data services for the old flash array in order to improve it and provide new services for our customers. Exciting, exciting times. It's already one of the fastest growing, I think they were saying, sales in, in, uh, in the history of EMC, so that's greatness. Thanks for stopping by, appreciate it a lot. Hopefully you had a good time on theCUBE. David, as always, love to get you out of the analyst meetings, get you on theCUBE. <laughs> I'm Jeff Frick, you're watching theCUBE, we're at EMC World 2015. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Thanks for watching.